Well, hello out there and welcome once again to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures podcast. I'm Tom. I'm here with my gorgeous wife, Michelle. Hello. Thank you, sweetie. So good to have you with us. We're recording this on Sunday, October 21st, 2018. And we really appreciate that you found us today. In the future, you can find us on 1057max.com under the Max Plus tab, as well as on the Max FM app. You can also find us on SoundCloud and on Stitcher. You can subscribe to us, and we'll come right to your phone or device. You won't need to go looking for us. Whenever we have a new episode, you'll get a little announcement. It's ready for you, and you can listen to us whenever you feel free to. Uh, you can find us on, on those sites on iTunes and Google Play Music, and we are also now on Spotify. So if you like to listen to a lot of music, a lot of podcasts on Spotify, you can find us there as well. And please, if you have a chance, just give us a little rating, maybe a little review if you have a little more time. Really would appreciate it so much. And it would really help others just like you find our podcast when they're looking around trying to find what they might want to listen to on their drive or just sitting around the house or whatever. Absolutely. Because we want to share, share, share. Absolutely. And we do want to thank those people who have put out reviews and ratings. We appreciate that. And we just really want to encourage everybody else, if you get a moment, to do that as well. Thank yes, you. Yes, and we know whatever you want to rate us, five stars. Whatever you want to rate us, five stars. It's fine. Five, five stars. Whatever you want to rate us. No, honestly, whatever you rate, whatever you feel is uh, sufficient for our show, we really would appreciate it out there. So we love hearing from you as well. This is an interactive show. We get uh, notes from a lot of uh, different listeners every week. We did a lot last week on our uh, Disney Cruise breakdown, our five favorite things. A lot of people helped us out with that one. Right. So uh, please contact us and let us know what you're thinking what you think about the show, if you have some ideas for the show, if you have some tips you'd like to share, we'll give you full credit, of course. Even if you just want to say hi to us, say you enjoy the show or you know, don't enjoy the show, well, then you can keep that to yourself. But whatever you, know, whatever you want to say, we're just happy to be in touch with all our Hyperion adventures out there. Uh, you can contact us on Twitter. We're on at uh, Hyperion Podcast. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. You can email us at Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com and we also have our own website along with the um, 1057max.com website. Our own website is HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com and there's a new way as of this week that you may be able to follow us a little bit as well. As of this week, we will start writing an occasional story, not a lot, but an occasional story for one of our favorite websites. We reference them a lot here on the podcast, uh, WW, WDW News Today, WDWNT.com. No, that's kind of exciting, right? It is exciting. It's exciting that they uh, hired us on as as uh, some writers for some of their Disneyland blog information and other Disneyland news. So we're very excited to be a part of that as right. well. Uh, we, we, they brought us on as a team. We are the Hyperion Adventures podcast team. Both Michelle and myself will be writing. Um, we are very busy with the podcast, with both of us working and other things. So I don't know if we'll have like a ton of articles out there, but they will be dropping in articles occasionally. Uh, um, talking about our visits to Disneyland. What they, what was what it is is that uh, WDW News Today looks like they want to expand their Disneyland coverage some. So they're hiring a bunch of a new group to really go out there and cover Disneyland a lot. And um, we saw that they were reaching out, so we contacted them, and they were interested in having us join. Yeah, it's very exciting. And there's a lot of new things and exciting things coming along this year, coming up at Disneyland. So it's a great thing to be a part of, and it's great that they're wanting to get more news out to everybody about Disneyland. Like you said, that they're kind of growing that focus again. Yeah, absolutely. No question about that. They, they are, they're heavy on to uh, Walt Disney World. They've done Disneyland in the past but they really want to ramp up some of that coverage of Disneyland coming up here in the future. So that's why we're going to be part of that. And, uh, of course, you can follow them. They have an app. They have a website. You can follow them and check out their stories. They always have great stories, whether it's from us or whether it's from many of the other writers they have out there. Um, but you can also check our social media because whenever we post something, we will definitely put it out there for you to know that this is our story. That's right. That we did. So um, that's a lot of fun. So let's get to this week um, away from that. Uh, there's a lots of stuff we have for you today coming up here, uh, including some uh, big Disney Cruise Line news. There's a few stories about de developments at the Walt Disney World Resort. Lots of great 
Disney stories that we'll get to in a little bit. But before we do that, we always start with our main topic of the week. And this week we thought, you know, I know it's not you know quite yet Halloween, but it's never too early to start planning for the holiday season at the Disney park. So let's get you up to speed early, ready to go, because it's one of our favorite times of year. And uh, we want to let you know what's going on out there. If you've never been to the parks or if you haven't been to one park or the other one or one resort or the other, whether it's the Walt Disney World Resort or the Disneyland Resort, kind of let you know what, what happens during the Disney or during the uh, holiday season. Sure. And some of you may already have some plans, some re- reservations for the upcoming holidays. And you may just want a refresher of what's out there that you may or may not have experienced experience in the past. And we have a couple new things that we want to bring out about that have started for this holiday season. Absolutely. So we're going to go break down uh, both of the resorts. Michelle's going to handle the Walt Disney World Resort. I'm going to handle the Disneyland Resort. It's kind of what our, we grew up, if you haven't followed, if you didn't follow us from the beginning, we grew up on different coasts. Michelle grew up going to the Walt Disney World Resort. I grew up on the West Coast going to the Disneyland Resort. So we kind of, that's kind of our specialties. That's where we kind of lean. So we're going to break them down between the two of us and and Michelle will lead us off because she's always should lead us off because she's wonderful um, <laughs> with the one, Walt Disney World sweet. Resort and what happens during the holidays at the Walt Disney World Resort. Well, thank you, my love. So uh, there is so much about the holidays at Walt Disney World that we could just do like multiple shows on that. So we're not going to be able to cover, obviously, everything, but want to hit the highlights, some things that uh, are real major things and we have a couple little things that people sometimes miss out on that that are really just as cherishable to Mm -hmm. experience for the holidays so breaking it down kind of by some of the parks starting first with epcot uh epcot has their international festival of the holidays and so that's at all the pavilions they have obviously food and you know um food and beverage, seasonal food and beverage, but they also have different performances that, Mm -hmm. you know, really try to highlight their culture and their traditions for the holidays. You know, for example, you might have Père Noël telling a story over in the France Pavilion, you know, and um, it is just a real rich experience to be able to go from, from country pavilion to country pavilion and have a different holiday experience and seeing it from their culture and their eyes. So that's, you know, I I mean, there's a lot of details we could provide, but I also like people to be able to have that experience on their own, you know, but just want to highlight people to do that. And of course, the other big holiday event at Epcot is the Candlelight Processional. And that is just amazing, amazing, amazing. It's just mind something bo- you should do every t- if you if you're out there for the holiday season. It's something you should look, at, especially if you've never done it before. But even if you have, uh, it really really gets you into the the mood of the season. It's really just right. a beautiful uh, ceremony. Uh, just a lot of fun and wonderfully put together. And right, really, can't recommend it more. And you'd probably agree with me that once you are there, it just kind of like official. Christmas is here. Right. When you see that. Even if it's early November. It doesn't That's matter. Right. That's it's right. Christmas like, is here. Yeah. Kicks it off. Or if you see it in December, it's just like, yes, it's here. But for those of you who haven't experienced that or who don't know about it, the Candlelight Processional, actually, it initiated in Disneyland yes, with, with Walt. Yes, I was going to talk about that a little bit All here. Right. Thanks a lot. All right. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Sorry about that. (laughs) But anyway, so what they do is they bring in a celebrity narrator each night, um, and they have an orchestra and choir that is made up of, like, uh, local schools or local choir groups that come in, churches, uh, choir, and they all participate in this uh, telling of the story of Christ's birth. So it's a real treat to experience that, and one of the best ways to experience that is by doing one of the dining packages, because that gets you kind of uh, in line for the best seats of the Mm -hmm. house uh, for that, because it is a stadium-type seating, uh, not assigned seating. General admission, yeah. Right. And so the people who are allowed into the area, seating area first, are the people who have gone to um, one of the dining, who have one of the dining packages. And the dining packages are obviously on the same day that you're going for the candlelight processional. And, and some of the restaurants have a breakfast and lunch or dinner. And based on when you make your reservation and what time of day is which of the um, of the candlelight processional shows that you'll see so they have multiples during the day so i can't recommend that any more than it is a not to be missed event and even though it is kind of a religious 
sort of ceremony oh. idea, you know, it's the birth of Christ, you know, even if you're not ultra religious, but just like the, the holiday season, just like right. the Christmas season, uh, it really does get you into it. You don't have to be, you know, super religious to go to it and enjoy the, the reading of the birth of Christ and just enjoy all the music and the choir right. and the, the orchestra and the singing. And it's just, it just really is a nice, nice event. Right. And it's just, it's, like I said, it's just amazing to watch it. It's astounding. And like you said, it even though the underlying um, story of it is the birth of Christ, you know, the vast majority of it is really based on the songs of the season. And, and so they're not all in a religious tone. Not that we have any problem with but being religious, you know, no, but, absolutely but, not. but we just to don't want you. to shy away somebody who might not have that as their main thing. Exactly. When you hear it's the, you know, the story of the birth of Christ, if you're not particularly religious, you might be like, well, am I going to church in the middle of Epcot? Do I really want to do that? Well, no, it's not really that. It is, you know, it's for both sides. If you're very religious or if you're religious at all, it's wonderful. If you're not, it still is a wonderful telling of the story of the season. It's really a great time. So that, that was all I was getting sure, at. You know? Sure, sure. It cross- it's a broad-based show. That's right. Saying. That's right. Absolutely. So then let's uh, travel on to Magic Kingdom. And obviously the Magic Kingdom is totally decked out for the holidays and it's super enchanted. <laughs> um, you know, big celebrations happening on select evenings with Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Oh, yes. So, you know, you can go in the park into the Magic Kingdom and just enjoy all the beautiful surroundings and music and food there. But as I mentioned, on select nights, they do have the very the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. That is, it is a separate admission. So yes. if you have an annual pass or, or regular day ticket for that day, it, it is a separate um, admission fee. But it's well worth the money. So they have, obviously, all the shows um, related to the holiday season, and they have a special spectacular parade Mm -hmm. which is mickey's once upon a christmas time parade and they have an amazing fireworks show which is separate from the regular time of year which is the holiday wishes fireworks show at the magic kingdom and that's where you can have a dessert package and what's really nice now is that they have a pre and a post dinner package that you can choose so you could either have your desserts and then go to the reserved area and watch the wonderful Holiday Wishes fireworks display. Or you could watch the fireworks first and then go get your desserts and settle down a little bit while the rest of the park is emptying out so that when it's time for you to leave, it's easy going. We've done the dessert packages before, not for uh, Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, but for other uh, ho- for the fireworks uh, spectaculars. And it really is a nice way to, you know, get a little eat a little food in. And, you know, some of it's good. Some of it's uh, mediocre, you know, dessert. But it's still kind of fun to have the desserts. And then right. you go over and uh, you get this really nice spot right up front in, in front of Cinderella Castle to go to check out the fireworks and all the pre- uh, the projections on it and everything is really is a good spot and uh, really an easy way. So you're not sitting there trying to find the right spot, standing there for having someone stand there for hours, hours you know, right. to get the right spot. So that really is helpful in, 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 if you want to enjoy more of the park. And if you're height challenged, yes. it's also vertically a- challenged. <laughs> vertically vertically challenged. challenged, Michelle. <laughs> I think we're, sometime we're going to do an episode, you know, Disney parks for the vertically challenged. That's right. Just let Michelle go off. And- <laughs> Absolutely. But that's also a way that you can make sure that you're getting a a very central and easy to uh, see uh, of all the show is by participating in one of those as well. And and again, not that you have to do it each and every time, but, you know, if you want to treat yourself, it's it is a fun way to to experience the park and the fireworks. Absolutely. There's also obviously in the Disney Hollywood Studios, lots of fun events. I saw they're on. already starting to decorate. I saw some pictures right? on Twitter today that they already have some holiday decorations out and we're not even through the the Halloween season yet. So exactly. they're, they're getting ready. They're ramping up. It's great. They are. They are. And because they are starting in earlier November for some of their activities. And uh, one of the things that we did last year, and I am excited to be taking my mom this year to it. And in a few weeks here is Jingle Bell Jingle Bam. Mm. And it is that is a great, it's also a fireworks show, but they also have lights and lasers. But you're right in the middle of Disney Christmas movies. Mm. So whether you're talking, you know, some of the um, 
cartoons with Mickey and and those classic characters or the Nightmare Before Christmas. It's kind of all around you, and it's a really exciting show. A lot of great music. They project them on the Chinese theater right That's there. That's right. right. Very good. And then at the end, they have the the big finale with snow in Florida. <laughs> Does it snow in Florida very often? No. Really? No. I could have sworn. I, 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 you know, skiing down those big mountains right? they have in exactly. Florida? Right, <laughs> exactly. They do have, they have, um, well, wait a minute. No, Florida is flat, honey. What? Yeah. But what they do I have mountains. They, maybe of? you're thinking of Space Mountain and uh, Thunder Mountain. Of course. They're big Thunder they're, Mountain. The one, only mountains that matter. Right, exactly. But the Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam um, show is really wonderful, wonderful. But they also have... A dessert party, you know. Nope. I think you know where I'm kind of going with my mind, you yeah. know. I, but I'm going to have to do chocolate. A lot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, Cue up Anna and Elsa. Chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> but oh wait, let me get back to the snow. Okay. Having had lived in the Northeast, um, I got an idea of how snow does look, mm. and and I give kudos to Dis- Walt Disney World. They do a pretty good show of snow as long as you're like looking up and watching it come out of the skies with kind of the lights in the background then it kind of looks pretty authentic as snow. After that it's just I'm sure it just piles up and stays on the ground <laughs> yeah. for a long time. Yeah, right? Same here in Southern California uh, snowing all the time. All the time. But anyways getting back to the Jingle Bell Jingle Bam holiday party which is their dessert party. It is pretty amazing. And this one is my favorite actually to go to because in addition to they seem to have like a nicer higher level of desserts and um, mm. offerings there but they also have fun holiday cocktails so Ooh, all of that. Well, now I know why it's, <laughs> it's your favorite <laughs> yep, I get it I understand yes um, but just like the other ones uh, they have like some spiked hot chocolates and oh stuff? yeah they have uh, spice hot chocolates they have different kind of cocktails um, with bourbon. Nice. And, uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's, you can't go wrong there. And um, as with the other ones, they have a reserved area. It, it's one of the best ones that mm-hmm. I have because you're right up front to get to watch that show as well. But there's other things going on at Epcot during the, excuse me, at Disney Hollywood Studios during the holidays. And um, also associated with food is the Hollywood and Vine restaurant where Minnie and her friends mm-hmm. host that where they have holiday dine. And so that's, you know, seasonal holiday food Mm. and decor in that restaurant. Um, Those are kind of hard to get if you haven't uh, reserved those yet. But, you know, don't give up. Always give give it a shot. You never know. Right. and cancel. That's true. But as of today, if you did want to get Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam, you can pretty much get those most days. Um, But the other new thing that they're having this year at Disney Hollywood Studios is the overlays for Christmas at Toy Story Land. Ooh. In fact, uh, they're calling it Holiday Cheer at Toy Story Land, but Ooh. they do have holiday soundtrack for alien swirling saucers, and I'm definitely excited. I got my Fast Pass already for nice. that, so looking forward to that as well. Now, I saw some uh, a little video Disney put out this week that had showed uh, Buzz and Jesse and um, Woody decked out in their holiday attire. Nice. You know, just little, you know, it's really... It's pretty much their same attire, but just some little holiday little things, touches. you know, stitched on to their, right. their, their outfits. So really cute. Yeah. Um, so kind of rounding out, just wanted to give now some of the lesser, I don't want to say lesser known, but maybe lesser experienced things that yeah. people, if, you know, especially if you can't get to one of the other, um, you don't have to pay to go experience that's true. the holiday season out there is what you're, essentially what you're trying to say. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Or even if like, if you're in the parks and you want to just add a little something extra, um, they have the tree lightings at dusk and mm. those are fun to just capture. It's just another one of those little things, but as you mentioned, um, there are things that you don't have to go into the parks. So, for example, at their deluxe resorts, they always have gingerbread displays. And I think a lot of people know about the um, the one at the Grand Floridian. The which famous one. That's yes. right, which is a gingerbread house. And that's neat. You, you know, it's 
it's really jaw dropping yeah, when you go beautiful. and see that. You know, I mean, not to mention the great smells. You know, but the amount of work that their um, bakers have done to assemble that. But they also have a lot of great treats that the, that you can purchase there. You know, obviously gingerbreads. But what's kind of cool is you can get like gingerbread tiles, mm-hmm. which are the same type of tiles, like roof that, tiles, yeah. that, right? That they use to make that. Um, but they also have other types of cookies and treats, um, and they also have specialty pins. So if you're into pin trading, then you can get uh, some of the specialty pins at, at that at those um, resorts as well. So that's another fun way. It's, you know, you're not having to go into the park or maybe you've gone into the park and you're kind of wanting to filter away from some of the crowds, trying out some of the resorts. Another great one is at the Beach Club where they have a carousel made mm. out of gingerbread. And, you know, so check out those. Don't, don't lose sight of some of those other special things. Yeah, you make it a goal to go out through the resorts and just go exploring and checking out the different, uh, the major trees that are the, some of the various resorts out there, the Fort Wilderness Lodge, right. um, me, not the Fort Wilderness Lodge, the Wilderness Lodge. We're going to talk about Fort Wilderness, right. I'm sure, in a moment here. The checking Wilderness Lodge <laughs> um, and, you know, over at the Animal Kingdom Lodge and such. And they have the, the, the big trees that, right. you know, outside of the parks that you really are beautiful and, and uh, wonderful to get a picture in front of and just just sit and enjoy. Right. And I think one of the first times you and I went to Disney, we did hotel hopping. Yeah. At the, it's, and it's one of the best things to do during the holidays, just to see the different decorations that they put at the different resorts, uh, you know, because they, they all fit the theme of whatever that resort is, and they all are spectacular in right. a different way. And every resort is, is decked out. Mm-hmm. It's just the deluxe ones have those special uh, gingerbread houses. And um, then there are... As you started to mention, the Fort... Sorry, spoiler alert. That's all right. I see you looking at my notes. Um, (laughs) The Fort Wilderness Campground hosts a lot of great, fun treats for the holidays. And some of the things go on throughout the year, but they're just kind of elevated with the holidays, such as, you know, their hay ride and, you know, the horse-drawn carriage rides that you can get. But one of the things that we love to do is actually very free. And that is just going around throughout Fort Wilderness and looking whether you're walking through where the cabins are, the Fort Wilderness cabins, or the campground where campers come. And it is truly amazing how people are doing this for their annual vacation. They're there usually for somewhat of an extended stay, either a week or two weeks, some are there longer, but they really go all out and deck their, whether they're, as I mentioned, the cabin or their their, uh, campers, and it is just phenomenal to go through and see the creativity and the amount of stuff people travel with, <laughs> you know, these blow up things and everything, but it numerous, is numerous, not just a blow up thing. Right. There's like, some of them have like a dozen blow up things. Exactly. There was, um, you know, sometimes you'll find like, um, last year we saw that there were several campers together that put t- together like an ice skating rink, a p- pretend ice skating rink that was pretty phenomenally large. It took, you know, like over like three of their camp areas together. Um, and, and p- it's creative what people do. Like, as I mentioned, it's all decked out. They have lights on there. One of the areas that we saw, some, one of the campers had actually put a basket out that had different um, 3D glasses that you could put on to see how the images looked with, you know, little types of um images along with it and it was you know a little sign help yourself kind of like know. prism glasses right they, yeah, they, yeah they, really they're, cool they're, and yeah. and a lot of people put out um like dog treats so you know their expectation is people are going to either be walking through or if you have a golf cart driving through mm-hmm. and looking at all these wonderful uh christmas decorations that people really take the time and effort to put together it's like going through you know hometown usa and seeing all these wonderful decorations yeah it really is cool and i don't think a lot of people know about it um but if you have the time, you know, take an evening, take the boat over from uh, whether there's the Wilderness Lodge or the Contemporary or, you know, Magic you want Kingdom. To, Magic Kingdom, that's true. You can take the boat over from the Magic Kingdom as well. Um, or you can take the bus over, of course, but just go out there and just kind of get to the campgrounds or to the cabins and walk all around and just enjoy the lights that everybody's put out and all these different decorations. And it really is. It's, it's kind of like, you know, people do this at home. You find that neighborhood that really decks itself out, and then everybody goes driving through that neighborhood slowly and looks at it. You know, you just pile up everybody in the car and you do that. Well, you can do that kind of at the uh, Fort Wilderness campgrounds as well. Right. 
So, I mean, it is mind blowing. Let me tell you, I just, I'm trying to describe it, but I don't think I could give it justice. I remember the very first time, you know, we went camping out there. I was like, whoa, what? Camping. <laughs> we don't camp. It's camping. It makes it sound like we're going out there in a pitch in a tent All and right. man, you know, we're out there on, we don't. Roasting hot dogs or whatever. No, we go to the cabins. We splurge. We do the cabins. And by the way, if you've never done the cabins before out at Fort Wilderness, um, highly recommend them. Those cabins are fantastic. Right. Really it's something different if you're used to going to the regular resorts. Go check out the cabins at some point. Exactly. So, so I mean, obviously, this is only just scratching the surface of the holiday fun that's at Walt Disney World. Um, there's special tours during that time of the year as well. They have the Disney's Yuletide Fantasy and the Disney's Holiday D Lights <laughs> tours. You know, and both of these are really sweet backstage tours of how to make the Christmas magic come alive. And so um, that's another great way to experience the parks. And then obviously there's a lot going on at Disney Springs with food and decorations shopping. and shopping. And um, they have like a scavenger hunt for mm. um, finding gifts. And so, uh, and, and I didn't even get into Animal Kingdom where they have a lot of Diwali celebrations and they're having this year a new up a great bird adventure show so yeah. lots so many things to do um and we could go on and on oh, you haven't but, even scratched the surface there's right. so much to check out out there but right. yeah those are really some good points for sure thank you yeah and now i think you're gonna shed some light lights, lights <laughs> many lights, lights. Matter of fact, i'm gonna get into disneyland. many lights here in a moment uh <laughs> about right. the disneyland resort so yes uh it's Thank you, Michelle. That's great information. And everybody, if you get a chance to get out to the Walt Disney World Resort during the holiday season, you really should uh, take advantage of that chance because it's really a spectacular time of year. Right. And if there's something we've missed uh, talking about here that you think is a really must-see, please let us know and we'll bring we'll that up. We'll share it next week or Absolutely. in the future. Absolutely. Yes. For sure. For sure. For sure. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the Disneyland Resort, kind of where I grew up uh, going to the, the park uh, and one of my favorites. Michelle has grown to be one of her favorites, too. It's yes. still not Walt Disney World Resort. Everybody admits that, but the Disneyland right. Resort is the Walt's original dream, and it still is wonderful. So, uh, for the holiday season of the Disneyland Resort, it begins on November 9th, and it runs past the holidays through January 6th. So, if you want to kind of... That's a little way to... If you want to get past the crowds, if you get, you know, go after the holiday season. If you can have an extra couple of days after New Year's, they have about a week there where the stuff is still decked out in holiday stuff, and you can still kind of extend your holiday season into January. Uh, anyway, Disneyland Park, arguably, it's the most decorated of all the Disney parks. If you just talk about Disneyland Park itself um, and how much right. decoration they have. Uh, Main Street USA, it's spectacularly decked out. They have the big tree right there in the hub. Lights and garland up and down Main Street. Sleeping Beauty Castle gets its winter overlay, which is beautiful. Um, it's a small world. It's amazing to look at yes. in the holiday season. You you have to go at some point during the holiday season just to see how It's a Small World gets lit up. And I was doing some research on it, and I was talking about how many lights there are. Ooh. Take a guess. If you haven't looked at my notes yet, I how many looked. lights they put on It's a Small World? Uh, I don't know that I could. I would uh, Let's see. 50,000. Now uh, You're way low. Oh, my goodness. But you have it partially right. I will say that. Oh, really? No, there are uh, an estimated 550,000 wow. lights, uh, if the internet is to be believed, um, <laughs> uh, that, that they deck out on It's a Small World. Uh, it is spectacular at night. You have to go see it at some point. It's unbelievable. Another favorite place I love for decorations is New Orleans Square. They have maybe my favorite holiday decorations there. It's kind of a little bit of Christmas and holidays. A little bit of Mardi Gras. Right. It really is a lot of fun, you know. I really enjoy that space a lot. Oh, yeah. Two great things to combine. That's and, right. and the colors are just phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, it's it's beautiful. Yeah. And really a really cool place to check out. Uh, Critter, And by the way, those, those usually stay up through Mardi Gras. Uh, they keep those decorations oh, up. Right. So if you're in there, even in February, you can still see a lot of those decorations in New Orleans Square. Uh, Critter Country, it gets decked out really well. It has kind of a rustic charm to their decorations out there with gifts for all the, uh, you know, the, the characters for the 100 Acre Wood and yeah. everything, you know, really fun. Uh, Fantasyland and Two-Town also get into the fun. The only place that doesn't really get into the fun is Tomorrowland because, you know, I guess maybe their holidays don't celebrate it in tomorrow. I don't know. Hmm, I don't know. They don't really, they, they don't really get decked out. But every place else in the Disneyland Park 
is totally decked out. Uh, attraction overlays, which are a lot of fun in the Disneyland Park. Absolutely. Haunted Mansion Holiday uh, will continue. Of course, it already has opened up for Halloween, but it's a Halloween slash Christmas uh, you know, movie, right. and so it extends right in through uh, the Christmas and holiday season. Uh, I just talked about it's a small world. It's a small world holiday. They go through this and totally redo the inside. Not totally redo, but they do a lot of Pants. additions mm-hmm. to the inside. Uh, not only they sing "It's a Small World" throughout it, they also are singing Jingle, Jingle Bells. bells. Throughout it, um, every little, I, we saw this. I think when it was decorating Disney last year for the holiday season, I didn't notice this before. I noticed a lot of it, but I didn't notice before. Every single one of the singing children has something holiday attached to them. Something, some sort of little holiday decor attached wow. to them. They do it to every single one of them. Really cool to go through, and just a lot of fun, and one of the best things out there. Uh, characters are decked out in their holiday best all throughout Disneyland Park. Um, their, their big parade they break out during that time of year is the, a Christmas fantasy parade, which is a lot of fun and, of course, includes Mrs. and Santa Claus. Yes. yes. Um, the Believe in Holiday Magic's Fireworks Spectacular culminates with snow. Yes, there's snow in Florida. There's also snow in Southern California as wow. well. Wow. I know. It's amazing it's how they magical. do that. It is magical. And yes, they. We, you discussed it already before. You spoiled it. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, they do actually have the Candlelight Processional out there at uh, the Disneyland Park. Uh, it was actually started there in, in 1958, Walt started it. Uh, unlike Epcot, there are only two nights for the Candlelight Processional out at the Disneyland Park. So it's really hard to get tickets for. So when they come available, you need to jump on it if that's something you want to do. It's usually the first weekend in December. They haven't announced it yet, officially, at least one last I checked uh, when I was looking through uh, Disneyland's site. But uh, if you feel like you want to do that, and they have some great speakers, just like they do at Epcot there. You know, Kurt Russell's done it in the past. Right. Dick Van Dyke's done it in the past. I've had some great speakers out there as well. And that, that takes place uh, right at the end of Main Street, at the Main Street USA train station so they kind of go up there and then they have the the carolers on the side and the chairs are out front and and the hub there or not the hub but you know the circle there for for the train station um really a cool thing we've been there we didn't go to it but we saw them setting up for it one time we were there about eh, it's like three years ago or something right right but you can find online especially what's really cool to see are some of the the ones that were from the early days mm-hmm. when Walt did start it. And it really is amazing that he came up with that creative thought of doing that, you know, way back then. And that tradition has continued. So that is pretty cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Very cool. So that's Disneyland Park. We're going to switch over just a few steps over. and A few steps, I think it's south. <laughs> Over to Disney California Adventure Park, and we'll talk about the decorations there. Um, they theme it really well up and down uh, Buena Vista Street. Big trees up there at the end of it, kind of near Carthay Circle. One of the fun things, and we've experienced this a couple times when we've been there during the holiday season, is the carolers come out. And right. They even do the carol of the bells where they're ringing the bells and everything. It's uh, really fun to just kind of stop as you're walking down Buena Vista Street and listen to the carolers uh, out there performing. Uh, other places that decorate well, Cars Land, um, just like they do for Halloween, they use car parts to put out their, <laughs> their holiday decorations out there. It's uh, it's awesome. Um, and when we found out actually from the, we were watching Decorating Disney last week, uh, the Halloween edition of it, that right. when they decided they were going to thinking about um, making these decorations for not only Halloween, but also for the holiday season, the Christmas holiday season, uh, that it was going to be Cars that were decorating for other cars. And so that's why the decorations look the way they do, using, like I said, these car parts all the way through it, but they really do it in an imaginative way that really comes through, and it really is one of my favorite places to walk through during any of the holiday seasons. Right. It is very creative to see that, to see, and to think, how would a wrench look Christmassy? But yet they do <laughs> they it. make it work <laughs> somehow. It's an imaginative cars, I'm it telling is, you. It is, it uh, is. And it continues on to Paradise Gardens, and then there it turns into kind of a traditional Latino decorations out there. Lots of great stuff going on out there. Uh, they also have attraction overlays out there. We talked about Cars Land. They have Mater's Jingle Jamboree, yeah. which is a lot of fun, and Luigi's Joy to the Whirl, <laughs> which is uh, also a lot of fun in Cars Land. Uh, if you go over to uh, the... Well, I was talking about the Paradise Garden. Uh, they have uh, what's called the Disney Viva Navidad Street Party, 
which is a lot of fun. That uh, is. It's the three caballeros lead the way. <laughs> Mickey and Minnie are involved. There's traditional Mexican dancers and musicians. Uh, Mariachi. Yes, it's a, it's really a wonderful experience and something you should actually go check out for sure. They may even have now that you know I don't know if they're gonna. They already did the Coco stuff for you know Halloween and Dia right. de los Muertos. I don't know if they'll add some of that into this year's version of it. It'll be interesting to see if they add something. A piece of that to it. Right. Well, just being that it is Pixar Pier now, yeah. we could see new style of some of the decorations this year. Sure. Sure. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see what happens at Pixar Pier uh, as far as your decorations. That's a good call there, right. Michelle. Um, and they also in Paradise Gardens area, if you want to get down there, it really, I'm like the, when the holiday season, they're really, because it's kind of a forgotten area of the park. It really, it's not really a place that a lot of people get to a lot, but they're doing a lot of great stuff down there to lead you into this area of the park. And now for, uh, for the holiday season, they have character meet and greets down there. There's face painting, there's special holiday food, but there's special holiday food throughout. And I'm just about to get to that. Um, the big thing that happens over at Disney California Adventure Park is the Festival of the Holidays. Yeah. Which is, uh, they light it up and go out there and they have 14 marketplace food and beverage booths. It's even, I've heard someone say it's even more than what they have at Epcot during the Food and Wine Festival as far as food booths. Um, So here's, we don't have a menu list of what they're going to have yet this year, but I'm going to go down just a couple of the fun things that we tried last year and some of the fun names for some of these <laughs> uh, food booths in the marketplace they went through. So first one I'm going to start with is one of my favorite names, which is Joy to the Sauce, <laughs> which uh, I know we tried there. We had uh, the braised short rib mm-hmm. with smashed potatoes and gravy, which was delicious. Was. Uh, we went to a twist on tradition, which had a butternut squash and almond fritter, which was really good. Um, making spirits bright. What do you think that has to do? <laughs> Yes, it has spirits. Right. That's right. Uh, it's all a bunch of wines, and they do have mimosa flights there. If you're interested in mimosas, that's a lot of fun. Uh, winter slider land. Uh, of course, obviously a lot of sliders. We tried the roasted turkey slider with cranberry sauce last year. Uh, Grandma's Recipes is another booth. Uh, we tried the beef brisket with brown sugar glazed, glazed carrots there last year. And I think one of our favorite dishes, we went back for like two or three times actually, which is odd because it isn't, uh, it's all the stuff I named. It doesn't seem like something you would go back for a lot, but it's really good, was at the Festive Holiday Extras booth and the Brussels sprouts with goat cheese, cranberries, and bacon, which was absolutely delicious. It was, It was yes. really, really good. So, I mean, they um, we don't know what the menu is going to be like this year, but that just kind of gives you a feeling of what kind of the food's like, and that's just a couple items. I mean, every, every one of these places has three or four items, usually a couple of entree-type items and a couple of desserts, right. and then they have some beverages to go along with them, and some of these stands are just beverages. They have, a, they have a beer um, booth as well as the wine booth. Right. Um, just lots of good fun to get there to uh, go check out all the food and drinks that are available at the marketplace. Right. And at, like at like Disney World, well, Disney World, Epcot's um, food and wine, uh, they're small plates. So you yeah. get to really try to uh, get your opportunity to try a lot of different flavors, a lot of different dishes. You know, so go on an empty stomach, and that's one of those days that you may not really want to go to one of the big restaurants right. so that you can really try all these different wonderful seasonal dishes. They've done a thing in the past, too, and I'm I'm probably would bet they're going to do it again this year for annual pass holders where you can pay a set fee, right. and then you get a badge on there that has little tabs on there. And then for that set fee, you can just walk up to one of these booths and say, I want this, and you give them one of your tabs, and they'll get you that food, and then, you know, and they'll give you like a little stamp or a little uh, sticker that you can put on there or a pin Mm -hmm. um and uh just kind of a fun other way to do this i we we tried to put too much in one day we tried (laughs) we ate too much um if you i would recommend that if you're an annual pass holder and you're going to be going there for a couple days whether it's a couple days in a row or whether it's a couple days throughout the holiday season right do that and they do sell out so you may want to if you get out there early to get them uh that Take advantage of that if you can. Right, because that, like you're saying, that lanyard with the different um, tabs on it will last, you know, for throughout. It doesn't have like an expiration date right. of that day, you know. And as long as the season goes on, right. And as long as you're using that to uh, purchase the more expensive 
items that are on the menus, then you're actually saving money. Saving like five, ten bucks. If, yeah. you're, if you buy all the most expensive items and use that, you save about five, ten bucks. But even if not, you're, right. you, know, you save a couple bucks, which is definitely worth it. So. Right. It's kind of like getting your annual pass discount for food. Right. Exactly. You know, kind of exactly. equates to that. that, that it's a perfect analogy there. Um, one thing we don't know what's going to happen this year, and then they've had in the past, and it's really great, but I don't know if it's going to happen this year because there's been no announcement. Uh, World of Color Season of Light, I, I don't know. You know, I, I'd like to believe that they're going to be have the renovations they're doing on World of Color done in time that they'll, at least at some point during the holiday season, be able to do it, but um, they're still refurbishing it. We'll see if that um, comes along. Um, another great way to check out both the parks for the holiday season is the holiday time at the Disneyland Resort guided tour. Uh, really cool tour offered daily, two times a day, 12.45 and 3.30 p.m. You visit both parks. Uh, your guide for this, uh, it will take you on a two and a half hour walking tour. Uh, you get to see all the dis- favorite Disneyland holiday traditions from around the world. You also enjoy reserved seating. This is important, reserved seating at the uh, for the A Christmas Fantasy Parade. Nice. So that's a nice bonus to that. Plus you get delicious holiday treats, a collectible pin, and they say more. I don't know what the more is, but um, either way, we love the tours, and that sounds like a fun tour to go on. Definitely. What's nice about the tours is, again, they really share a lot of the backstage uh, items that go on. And like when you mentioned getting a pin, their pins are totally sweet from the tours. They're you're, they're not your average where no. you go into a store and... and you're not trading those pins. No. No, no, you're not trading them. Those pins, They're beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the price for this is $85 per person. If you want to make reservations, uh, you can call uh, uh, Disney at 714-781-8687. Again, 714-781-8687. I was just checking uh, the other day, and they were still wide open because I was trying to figure out if we would want to do it at some point. But yeah. we shall see. Uh, and also, of course, the uh, Disneyland Hotels um, and the Disney, the downtown Disney District also get into the fun of the decorations and everything. They're worth just walking around and checking them out as well. So uh, really great stuff at the Disneyland Park. Really great stuff. Uh, at Walt Disney World Resort, right. Disneyland Resort uh, for the holiday season. Really, really get out there and take advantage of that time. Yes, absolutely. And you gave a lot of great tips of what not to miss and what makes it special. Yeah. And, you know, and going back to your comment at the beginning of Walt Disney World is larger. And so obviously things seem bigger than at Disneyland. I think it's really great that Disneyland does do these special like ride overlays, et cetera, mm-hmm. to make it you know, a different experience than other times in the year, just even with the attractions. Yeah, I, they, they really go all out, and we love it. It's our favorite time of the year. Um, I, I'm sure many of you out there love the holiday season out there. Maybe you can't get to some of these places, whether it be the Disneyland Resort or the Walt Disney World Resort as easily, but if you can, whether it's this year, whether it's next year, whether it's two years from now, uh, I highly recommend it. I'm sure Michelle follows you. Absolutely. Um, try and schedule a vacation out there. It doesn't have to be right in the Christmas season, you know, you can schedule it in late November. You can schedule it in early December. We were out there early December last year to check out uh, at Walt Disney World Resorts and mm-hmm. check out the holiday stuff. Exactly. You know, the the time between Thanksgiving and Christmas week really is a slower time of year at the Walt Disney World Resort. So that is a prime time to be able to get in there, have less crowds, have more opportunity to pick up some of these shows or reservations at some of the dining places um, that are associated with special holiday season. So it is a great time to to explore at that time. Yes, absolutely. Definitely get out there and do it when you get a chance to. Um, So... That's it. That's our that's our main topic, the holidays at the Disney parks. We'd love to hear what you think about the holidays at the Disney parks. What did we miss? What special things do you and your family like to go do out there at the parks? Um, please contact us. I've given you the information at the front of the show. I'll give you the information also at the back of the show, all the ways you can contact us. We would love to hear from you on what you like about the various Disney parks during the holiday season. Sure. And if there is something that your family does as a holiday tradition that incorporates Disney, we want to hear about that as well because yeah. that's that would be a fun thing to share. Absolutely, and we will share that uh, on upcoming shows if you send that to us. Before. Yeah, and may inspire us or others to want to replicate it. So. Yeah, no question. Yeah, they might steal that right from you. Exactly. That was our tradition. What are you talking about? <laughs> it didn't come from you. That was our tradition all along. Yeah, it's just we forgot to mention yeah. it. <laughs> Oh, that's funny stuff. So that's it. That's our main topic of the week. Uh, If you know this show, we always go from a main topic, maybe two main topics, and then we move on to the Disney stories of the week. There's so many stories 
that come out every week from Disney, and we like to cover a few of them to talk about uh, some of the stuff that's going on, whether it be at the parks, Disney Cruise Line, Run Disney, Disney Vacation Club, whatever it may be. And this week we had some big news going out there. I'm going to start with Disney Cruise Line. Uh, Big news from Disney Cruise Line is that they received uh, approval from the Bahamian government for Lighthouse Point development. Yay! Yay. So this is straight from the Disney Cruise Line blog, which, by the way, if you uh, love Disney Cruise Line, the Disney Cruise Line blog is a great place to get uh, Disney cruise information. Uh, the Bahamian Prime Minister announced uh, the OK on Friday gives Disney uh, Cruise Line a green light to move ahead with plans to purchase the 700 to 800 acre Lighthouse Point property at the tip of the South Eleuthera. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, for a second private cruise destination, as we talked about in prior episodes, right. we know with the new ships coming, they're gonna, they already are getting kind of crowded when all four ships happen to be on the East Coast. But if they're going to have three more ships coming, it's going to be tough to find days to get to Castaway key for all of them so they kind of need to find another spot to start on right and for those of you who have gone to castaway keys even though you know you can love it every single time if you're a frequent cruiser out there this gives another element that you can experience and say still uh, be excited about disney cruise line absolutely i'm looking forward to seeing what this what they do with uh this place uh so this is what the next steps are from here uh disney and the bahamas will negotiate a heads of agreement it's a legal term that will uh then be presented to uh the bahamas parliament uh the heads of agreement is basically a document that outlines issues important to both sides and then they both agree on that okay these issues are good for both of us and that that goes through and then it's sent to parliament and then they can go ahead and go through with this by the way they're not purchasing this land from the bahamas themselves there's another company that actually owns this land that they're purchasing it oh from. that's interesting so, yeah. uh, but still the bahamian government does need to okay it for them to just go ahead and do it uh so that may if this all goes through here we may be hearing soon about disney's lighthouse point nice as one of your cruise destinations coming up so a lot of fun absolutely a lot of fun uh so on to more now we're going to go from disney cruise line to the Disney World Resort. And some big news came out this week from the Disney World Resort, and that is that they announced a new nature-themed resort at the Walt Disney World Resort. Wow, yes. very exciting. New resort coming. Uh, this straight from our friends and now co-workers at WDW News today. Uh, it's been rumored for a long time. Uh, the confirmation came this week. It will be in between Disney's Wilderness Lodge and Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. You may know it as the old river country site. If you're on the boats out there, you pass by all the time and say, well, it's just falling apart, but it's just sitting there. What are they going to do with that? Exactly. It's a prime piece of land, too. Right. Nice. Um, so that is where they're, at least what the plans seem to be, where they're going to be building it. Uh, it's been, like I said, it's been rumored that that might be a site for a new vacation club slash resort um, out there for a long time. Uh, it's scheduled to open in t- uh, uh, 2022. Uh, they say it will have 900 rooms in Disney Vacation Club Villas. Um, Terry Schultz, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Disney Vacation Club, said in a statement, quote, The resort experience will be a celebration of Walt Disney's lifelong love and, and respect for nature with some fun and even surprising accommodation types that families will find irresistible. It will give our members and guests yet another opportunity to stay in close proximity to all the newest attractions and experiences in our theme parks and with the flexibility, value, and world-class service families expect from Disney, end quote. So it really sounds like kind of a, a cool place. If you've seen the if you've seen the mock-ups of it, just they just have a quick little uh, rendering of it, the, the front of it online. But it does look kind of a, really like it might be a nice, beautiful spot. Awesome. And you know, at Walt Disney World, whether you're talking about like right now the the Fort Wilderness Campgrounds or Wilderness Lodge, I mean they really play, pay homage to nature and keeping it in that theme. And and so this is another great resort that will have that same kind of warm experience yeah that's what it looks like it looks like it will be great and it's in a kind of an unused area they just need some uh repurposing there and right so we'll look to see what we go there's no name uh that's been set out yet uh wdw news today speculated that it might be called the disney discovery lodge which would be interesting if that's what it is. It's so. also out by where Discovery Island was. Yeah, it is right, right. You can see right across to Discovery Island right. out there. So. Another place that they need to figure out if they're going to repurpose that area. Right. Um, 
Anyway. Uh, so another interesting news bit that came out this week is that Disney submitted for a patent for a unique new roller coaster car design. This again from our friends at WDW News Today. The diagrams that were posted for the patent reveal a revolutionary ride system that will allow the cars to rotate within the attraction. Wow. So what this means, essentially the cars will turn and can view different things as they're going forward on the track. So they can still go forward and they can turn to the side and see some sort of uh, show or something to look at or whatever it may be, some sort of projection, whatever, as the coaster is going on. First chance to see these in action is Looks like it's going to be the Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster in development at Epcot, scheduled to open in 2021. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, really interesting new thing. And, you know, whether they get the patent or not, it's still going to be a very cool, uh, unique roller coaster design. Um, by the way, WDWNT.com, the same people I was just talking about who had this story, had some photos from a little while back where they actually had some leaked photos when they were testing the actual cars out themselves, not just the patent, not just the, the diagrams. Right. I mean, they actually showed the cars on a roller coaster like wow. track. So if you want to go there and check them out, uh, it's attached to the story. If you want to look at the story, um, you can find a link to those pictures and see what those cars look like. So really yeah. cool and interesting yeah, and scary. Exciting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but fun. Yes. But fun. That's all about fun. Uh, we're moving on. More Walt Disney World Resort news. Lots of Walt Disney World Resort news. Uh, boat service through Epcot's International Gateway is going to be suspended for a week, a few weeks uh, beginning next month in November. Uh, the boats will stop running from November 28th to December 18th. Uh, they're closing this to accommodate work on Disney Skyliner that they're you know, putting into operation, right. hopefully not too long from now. Um, there were rumors that they would close the uh, International Gateway completely, but it's still going to be open to foot traffic. So if you like That's to good. walk from Boardwalk or from the Hollywood Studios or whatever, or any of the resorts down there, the Swan and Dolphin, whatever, you, still, beach, yep. Yep, you still can walk. Uh, you just won't be able to take the boats. Um, so uh, they will have, you know, you won't have to walk. They will have bus service right. that will take you uh, right to the parks. Uh, available for you so you don't need to worry about that so just interesting news and it's good to see that they're moving forward they also released a little video about the disney skyliner this week it looks great and excited know, to try it I'm, I'm hoping when we get out there this summer that it will be ready to go by that point that'd right. be a lot of fun um and one final news story for me then this time i actually remember you have a news story i'm going to <laughs> i was going to see sure if you remember you. i remembered this time um one last news story and this is in deals with the disneyland park uh, disneyland announces a new partnership with chalk the children's hospital of orange county uh, this is straight from the disney parks blog in march uh, Disney chairman and CEO Bob Iger announced an innovative plan to dedicate more than $100 million in company resources, including cash, products, and services, to reinvent the patient and family experience in children's hospital across the globe as part of Disney's Team of Heroes initiative. Disney is already working with patient care experts to help create more personalized and comforting experience for patients and families. Uh, they already are, are doing this in one uh, hospital. It's the in Texas. It's the Texas Children's Hospital in Houston. That was the first hospital to receive this. Now, Chalk, the Children's Hospital in Orange County, is going to be the next one. Uh, they, the uh, last week, Disneyland Resort President uh, Josh Diamaro announced uh, that they would be the next to participate in this program. So that's great news for them. And we know that Disneyland and Chalk have a great history together. Right, very long-standing history. Mm -hmm. And you know, it wasn't too long ago we were talking about the Chalk Walk, right, and you were, so you were performing. You were. You were Taking part in the chalk right, walk, right, right. So that's awesome. Yeah. So here, uh, Disney will work with patient care experts at Chalk to create a combination of customized experiences with favorite Disney characters and legendary creativity. The atmosphere will help provide moments of joy and inspiration to young patients and their families, helping to ease the stress of a hospital stay. The patient and family experience will be brought to life in ways only Disney can do, using interactive technology, storytelling, and fun. That's so touching. Yeah, yeah I'm really glad great. to hear Disney doing stuff like that. Hundred million dollars. I mean, it's not this. This hundred million dollars is not just going to chalk. It's right. going to this whole program. Right. You know, and I'm sure there'll be some other uh, hospitals, children's hospitals, that we're going to hear in the future that are going to 
be a part of this program as well. But I'm so glad to hear that they're uh, doing this with Chalk, who's you know done so many great things. And by the way, we will probably be taking part in the Chalk Walk again next year, right. and we will probably be forming a team if you have interest in joining us on that team. Right. Nice. So. Well, that's great. I didn't know about the Texas one, so that's yeah, pretty I, yeah. impressive. So. Yeah. I, mean, it's, I, I actually was surprised they didn't go with chalk first, knowing that there are already so many ties in there. But right. uh, either way, it's great to see that they're getting it across the country, and hopefully uh, the Children's Hospital near you will be the next one. So that's my Disney stories of the week. I didn't forget <laughs> Michelle has a story this week, and so here's Michelle's Disney story of the week. Well, thank you, sweetie. And this is really, like, not news news in terms of, you know, something new and innovative starting, but just to let people know that, and I'm going to hopefully say it right because I keep saying it wrong, is uh, the Dapper Day, yes. <laughs> not Dapper Dan, but Dapper Day Expo is coming to the Disneyland Resort next month. It's going to be held on November... But the Dapper Dans are always dapper for Dapper That's Days right. as well. That's <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, so at the Disneyland Resort on November 3rd and 4th, you can get your styling on and have a great time at their expo, which is held at the, uh, the Disneyland Resort Exhibition Hall. Um, it's really grown. Now... Tickets are only $10, and that's valid for both days. Kitties under 12 get to be in there free. So it's a, it could be really a fun family event for you to just dress up. They you know, they really did want to make sure people understood. It's it's not cosplay. It's, it's really just styling. It's really trying to be... Um, Dressing up mm-hmm. is, is, you know, kind of usually, really the whole thing. Usually kind of a vintage type clothing. Right. But yes, dressing up. Yes. You know, and they, um, so they also have entertainment. They'll have the San Andreas sisters on Saturday and Jennifer Keith on Sunday. And what's really cool is in, in addition to the great music with live music, um, they're actually going to do some dancing lessons. Ooh. So uh, something that, that we can certainly <laughs> use. <Boy. laughs> I love dancing lessons. I know. Not, they, no, no, they're fun. They're fun. No, I, they're fun sometimes. They are. And then they also have <laughs> they also have some authors that are going to be there um, doing book signing. So Charles Phoenix will be there signing his book, Addicted to Americana, and Chris Nichols, uh, his book, The Walt Disney's Disneyland which we talked about recently. We've talked about, yeah. Mm-hmm. We're still trying to get him on the show at some point. Maybe we can talk to him when we're out there yeah. and see if he'll come on the show. He's, we, we, I actually did email with him and talked with him, and he's like, well, it's being handled by this this firm that uh, you know is dealing with the, putting out the publishing the book, and unfortunately they haven't gotten back to me, but hopefully soon that they will. Now, I'm sure there was when that book came out, there was a big deal about it. But uh, right. anyway, we're going to hit him up when we're, we're out there. Definitely. Good idea. I digress. That's all right. Uh, the other thing about Dapper Days. I almost said it wrong. The other thing about Dapper Days. You've been Days, saying it wrong all week, which has been it's just adorable, by the way. No. It's like get it through my head. Anyways, um, what they they do is it's not a formal meet and greet because they don't want to make um, something be very crowded for other guests who are at the Disneyland Resort or Disneyland Park. But they do like to um, encourage their their participants to get together to experience two of the original. Uh, 1955 Disneyland Park attractions, which is the Mark Twain Riverboat and the King Arthur's Carousel. So they don't have a specific time. They just say it's best around mid-afternoon on those days to get aboard the Mark Twain Mark Twain Riverboat. Easy for you to say. Yeah. Um, or Sunset Gallop on King Arthur's Carousel. Yeah. So. Um, you know, if you're interested, those go on both days. On Saturday, it, the expo hours are, are noon to 7 p.m. And on Sunday, 10 to 7 p.m. So we're going to be out there. Hope you get to have that experience as well because it sounds like it's going to be a blast. Yeah, and by the way, it's fun. It's obviously great to get dressed up and go out there and really, you know, have a good time out at the park in you know downtown Disney area, the Disneyland Hotel where the expo is taking place. But even if you don't feel like, or if you don't have the clothes, or you don't feel like dressing up, it's a fun time to be out there to see everybody dressed to the nines and just to see all the different right. creativity they have with these outfits. Some of it's, it, some of it is yes, just standard, really nice vintage type clothing. Some of it is really creative Disney bounding that's uh, really interesting and a right. lot of fun to see. And it's cool to see the different ways that they explore their their dapperness. Yes. With, so. so, another great story, and I didn't forget about it this yeah. week. I'm going to pat myself yeah, on the back because yes. I'll forget next Ta-da. week, so I got to do it while I can. <laughs> so, uh, that's the Disney stories of the week, uh, capped off with another great Michelle story. Now, we're going to go on to 
our vacation tips of the week. As we told you in the past, we always finish out the show with a tip that might help you on your next vacation, whether it be Disney Cruise Line, Walt Disney World Resort, Disneyland Resort, whatever. We try and help you out. So maybe on your next trip, this might be something you might take advantage of. And as always, just like she has a story that I always forget, but I didn't this <laughs> week, she does have always the best tips, which I never forget because she does have the best tips uh, and she's also wonderful. So uh, here you're is too sweet. Michelle's tip of the week. Uh, All right. Well, this one is actually kind of a a smaller tip, but I don't know if you've ever found yourself at, like, let's say California Adventure, where you've ordered a bottle of wine with lunch or dinner, and you still have some left in the bottle, but Uh, you're ready to leave the restaurant. I always drink that to the last drop. (laughs) Uh, I recently were at the tasting terrace, and I I think that didn't happen. We, We were ready to go, and there was still a little bit of wine left. And so if you ever find yourself in that, not to worry, you can request a plastic wine cup and then be able to walk through California Adventure with that. And so not to miss any of the wonderful wines that they have there. So Yeah, that's a really great uh, thing that you can do. It's not like your regular restaurant where you can't leave. I mean, yes, you can leave with your bottle of wine, but you can't be drinking it as you're walking down the street unless you're in Vegas or New Orleans or something like that. Um, But you can do that at Disney California Adventure Park. You can just ask for a plastic cup rather than your you can't walk out on down through there with a regular glass glass, right. uh, with a plastic uh, wine glass, and just enjoy the rest of your wine and don't let it go to waste. Exactly. So, so. great tip. Thank you. Indeed. Quick tip. Quick tip. Quick tip. My tip is not as quick. All right. <laughs> yeah, I knew we're the yin and yang. There we go. Tips. That's true. Uh, so my tip is, since we we're talking about the holidays at the Disneyland Resort, I'm going to talk about some ways that you can avoid some of the crowds that always come along with the holiday time at the Disneyland Resort. And these actual tips um, could be used for just every day at the Disneyland Resort when it gets uh, tremendously crowded or some of the more crowded days at the Disneyland Resort or any park for that. It could even be at the Walt Disney World Resort uh, for that matter. But um, the key of it really to avoiding crowds when you're out of the Disneyland Resort is go early and or stay late. Right. Those are the best times. Uh, it's a good plan, like I said, for any time of year, but especially the holiday season. The busiest times at the park are usually somewhere around, they start really around 11 a.m., and they run till about 3 p.m. I was just looking uh, yesterday at uh, Disney Park's Twitter, and I know that it's, it was funny because I, I had already written this out, um, that the parking, the Mickey and Friends parking garage was full at about 11 11- 15, 1130 yesterday. And then it was reopened at about 2 30, 3 o'clock wow. yesterday. So just to kind of show you how busy it is during those times. Uh, so you get in early. Um, if there's some really, uh, some of the, you know, more popular attractions you really want to go on, you get those out of the way early. So you don't have to worry about that later on. Then you can spend the rest of the day moving on, explore some of the lesser populated attractions, you know, maybe something you haven't gone on in a while. Uh, you can, you know, it's the holiday season. You can check out some of the decorations. Um, you know, you can, you can also go to the shops. You can go eat, you know, whatever. Or better yet, if you're staying in a nearby hotel, you know, take advantage of that and rest up for the evening time, which is the other time you want to be there. Go back to the hotel, explore the decorations there, right. or use the pool, whatever, relax. Come back later because you really want to be there during the holiday season, especially at the in the evening times, because that's when it's all lit up and it looks spectacular and beautiful. You really want to check it out that way. Um, you know, and the best time to really do that is, you know, go there. Check out the fireworks. After the Believe in Holiday Magic fireworks, park will start to clear out. People think that the fireworks show is the end of the night. So they'll be like, that's it. We've seen the fireworks. Time to leave. Won't be necessarily right away, but usually the attractions start to empty out around that time. So you can kind of get back on some of those attractions maybe you weren't able to hit earlier. Right. That's a good point. So um, really good times to be there are morning and late. Now, if you want to eat times, you know, if the, sometimes the restaurants can get a bit crowded as well. So think about when you're doing this in your, especially if you're going early and staying late, think about eating at maybe some non-traditional times. Like say, if you're going to have a breakfast, have a late breakfast, you're getting there, you're going to the park, you can go do some lunch attractions early, then maybe have a little bit late breakfast somewhere between like 9.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Crowds might not be as bad. And usually for breakfast, they're never really bad anyway. There. Right. Um, um, an early or late lunch. So anywhere like from 11 to 11.30 a.m., kind of before the lunch rush starts, you know, happening around noon to two o'clock or 3 p.m. or later, if you're going to have lunch there. And if you're staying late, then your lunch can be shifted to later and that's fine. Right. 
uh, early or late dinner. So if you're going to have dinner there, have early dinner at 4.30 or 5, somewhere between 4.30 and 5.30 before the dinner rush happens, or 9.30 p.m. or later. You know, and that's when you might be able to have a few smaller crowds at these places. Um, take advantage on the attractions, not only, do, you know, going there early and staying late to when it's, but, you know, uh, fast passes, max pass, if you, you have the app, take advantage of all those. That'll help you in so many ways. Um, also, we talked about it earlier. Take the, hol- uh, the holidays at the Disneyland Resort tour. If you're looking to do a tour, check out the holiday stuff. It's at a good time of day. If you've already done some attractions early in the morning, like I said, it's at 12.45 and 3.30. So it's kind of around that time where it might be a little bit busier. So you can kind of go on this tour during that time when it's busier and check out all the cool stuff that they have holiday-wise. But then you don't have to wait out if you want to go see the parade so badly because you'll have a reserved spot at the parade plus right. you know all this cool stuff you get along with the the tour kind of another way to get in there yes you're paying for that advantage but it's you know kind of another fun thing to do basically look you know for the holiday season especially but a lot of times during at Disneyland park crowds are inevitable slow down remember it's the holiday season you're at the happiest place on earth just take it all in enjoy it Smile. Look up, as Michelle had a good point last (laughs) night, to see some of the decorations. Just enjoy the holiday season. You're lucky to be where you're at. Right. And, you know, if you do frequent the parks, then this is a time that rather than trying to fight for, uh, you know, to get onto the attractions, is to just explore the different side of it. You know, the the thing that makes it special at that moment, which is the holiday decor. Yeah. Like I said, that's a great time in the middle of the day when it's when it's a little busier. That may be your signal when you're when the ride wait lines start really ramping up. Take a step back and find the other things to do you know, right. around the park. Good um, tip. You know, thank you, thank you. So that's it for this week. I uh, really appreciate you joining us. Next week is really going to be a fun week for us. We're going to get you prepped. The food and wine run Disney race. Food and Wine Half Marathon Weekend is coming up here right. in just a couple weeks. We are going to get you set for what you should be have prepared for your race day, whether it be the Food and Wine, whether it be the Walt Disney World Resort Marathon Weekend, whether it be the Star Wars, whatever, whether it be the Princess, whatever you have. We're going to get you set for what you should know when race day comes around. Excited to hit for that show. Yes. And actually, I'm handling that one, so Michelle's going to sit back and just I know. take it all in. That's this is why I'm excited for that one. <laughs> Uh, another thing we're going to be doing next week is we're checking out Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas live at the holiday, uh, the Hollywood Bowl. Hey. Uh, so we're going to come back with a recap of that and tell you how that night went and uh, what kind of fun came out of that. We're really excited to go do that. Uh, we're doing that Saturday night, so we may be a little worn out by the time we do the show on Sunday, but right. we'll still, it would have been fun and we'll be looking forward to talking about it. Yeah, I can't wait for that. This sounds like it's going to be a blast. Yeah, so. yeah. It really looks like a, a great time and we'll be telling you all about it. And if you follow us on social media, we'll probably have some pictures uh, from it to tell you what's going on. And speaking of social media, uh, if you haven't, aren't following us already, here's the ways you can follow us on Twitter at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook and Instagram at Hyperion Adventures Podcast on the web. You can follow us. You can check us on our website if you want to connect with us through a comment, whatever. Uh, Hyperion Adventures Podcast.com. And you can email us if you want to talk with us about anything that we've talked about on the show or if there's a topic you want us to explore in future shows. We'd love to hear from you. Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. And like I said at the head of the show, you also can look for some of our stories. Stories coming up on WDW News Today. That's at WDWNTN, as in Nancy, T.com. Um, you can also find us on 1057max.com under the Max Plus tab and on the Max FM app. On um, If you want to hear our podcast in the future or go back to some of the podcasts, maybe you've just joined us now and we this is episode 21. We have 20 other episodes. If you want to take the time to go through, you know, pick and choose or listen to them all, go ahead. Uh, we're on SoundCloud. We're on Stitcher. You can subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play Music and we're now also on Spotify, another great way to get our show. Yeah, super excited. Yes. So, and if you get a chance, please just give us a little review, a little rating. Uh, you know, rating's easy. There's the stars there. You just click on whatever star you want. You click on whatever star you want. We appreciate it. Five stars. Whatever you want to put there is great. Uh, really, whatever you uh, whatever you feel is appropriate is fine. Uh, if you have a little more time want to give us a review, we'd really like that as well. It just helps other people just like you 
find our show that might enjoy the show just like you do and you keep joining us every week and we love all our appearing adventures out there all our listeners and we love that you keep coming back every single week so that's it for this week. Thank you again for listening to the Hyperion Adventures podcast. We look forward to sharing some time with you again next week. But until that time, I'm Tom. I'm Michelle. And we hope you have a magical week.